We're here at Beth Israel Deaconess Chestnut Hill Running Clinic. I'm Allison Katz, physical therapist, and we're going to analyze a patient's gait today. So when I do the gait analysis, um, I have the patient start running, have them go for a couple of minutes so they can find their st comfortable stride, and then I take a, a probably about a 10 to 15 second video from the side, and then I go around to the back and shoot the video from there to look at what their hips and knees and ankles are doing. And then I'll do a close-up to look at their feet. All right, so we're going to look at the video I took of you running to see if we can find any deviations that might be causing your current injury. So we'll look at it at full speed. And then we'll slow it down a little bit. Okay. And so what I'm looking for here is where your foot is landing, how far in front of you it is, how much you're moving up and down. And then we can look at it frame by frame to see some measurements that I took here to figure out what we can do to help your problem mm -hmm. and, um, and what changes we can make in the gate that might be helpful. So here we see that you're landing about 20 centimeters out in front of you. So that's a little bit too far. So the further you land out in front, the more impact it's going to put on your joints. Also here we're looking at how much bend there is in your knee. Um, there's about 17 degrees, which is okay. If you have no bend in your knee, that's going to put more stress on the knee. I also calculated how much you're moving up and down. It was about 10 centimeters, mm -hmm. which is a little bit too much because the more you move up and down, the less efficient it's going to be and the more stress it's also going to put on your joints as well. If we increase your cadence, it'll help to bring your landing closer to your center of gravity and it'll also help to keep you from moving up and down so much. We've increased his cadence about a little more than 5% and he's from the beginning he's found that to be a lot more comfortable for him running. He has a, a, um, a hip muscle injury, a piriformis strain, and so um, it actually helps to activate the gluteal muscles a little bit better. So you're basically using less energy when you're moving, so you're more efficient. So you're still running at the same speed, you're just turning your feet over faster. So you're not, not making your stride quite so long. And the other thing I might do is I put a mirror in front and have people look at you know, the mirror and try to keep their knees apart or try to keep their feet pointing straight ahead. So when I'm trying to correct someone's step rate, I'll have them run to the beat of the metronome usually about 5% faster than their preferred step rate. And kind of the, the protocol I follow is I'll have it on for two minutes, off for a minute, on for a minute, then have them keep running, stop, get back on and kind of check to see if they've been able to maintain that. And then I'll have them do that a couple times on their own. Um, but usually people catch on to it pretty fast and they're able to correct it pretty quickly because it's not usually a dr drastic change and it actually usually feels more comfortable for them too. They've done studies finding that even if people kind of pick their natural step rate and then go 5 to 10 percent faster, it decreases the force on their joints overall. But the mirror in front, especially for people if they tend to kind of drop in to that medial collapse, I'll cue them to try to keep their knees apart, to try to keep their hips level, try to activate their glute muscles. But rather than like telling them how to do it, it's actually better for them to learn just to kind of give them those cues of what you want them to do, like land lighter, you know, push your knees apart, keep your hips level rather than saying like, squeeze your glutes, push off with your calves, because it helps people to kind of develop their own motor pattern. Looks good.